This is not the violent blast many fear. It is something more relentless. Over 3,500 people have been forced to leave their homes as Mayan summit glows and its slopes unleash a surge of pyroclastic flows. Authorities have raised alert levels and the real threat is not a single eruption. It is what continues to destabilize beneath the surface. So what suddenly changed at Mayon and why have scientists shifted from concern to an urgent warning? On January 6th, just after midday, instruments at Mayon registered a sudden collapse at the summit lava dome. The event lasted three minutes. In that short window, a dense pyroclastic current surged down the Bonga Gully, traveling less than two kilometers from the crater. Five OLCS recorded the flow's timing and runout, noting its speed and the way it hugged the steep channel. This was not an isolated incident. In the days leading up to this collapse, the volcano had already produced 346 rockfalls and four volcanic earthquakes, numbers drawn from the official event log. Each rockfall, each tremor, signaled a dome growing more unstable. By January 7th, the pattern intensified. 16 separate pyroclastic density currents were documented over just four hours, each one a discrete pulse of hot ash and rock spilling down the same southeastern drainage. Ash clouds rose as high as 580 meters above the summit, drifting with the wind and dusting the upper slopes. The frequency of these flows, sometimes just minutes apart, meant that the volcano was not simply venting pressure, but repeatedly sending dangerous currents into channels that point directly toward inhabited areas. The event log from these two days reads less like a list of isolated incidents and more like a continuous sequence, each collapse feeding the next. This relentless rhythm is what scientists are watching now, searching for any sign that the flows might lengthen or that the dome could fail more dramatically. The timeline is clear. Mayon is not quieting, it is accelerating. Alert level three was declared after a series of technical thresholds were crossed, none of them dramatic on their own, but together unmistakable. Vivio LCS bulletins described a persistent glow at the summit, visible even through cloud cover at night, a sign that fresh magma was reaching the surface. Ground deformation instruments registered a steady tilt on the volcano's flanks, evidence of pressure building within the cone. Sulfur dioxide measurements, while not at record highs, remained well above background, signaling ongoing degassing from shallow magma. These signals, tracked in real time by a network of seismic and gas sensors, told scientists that Mayon had entered a magmatic eruption phase, not just a phase of surface instability. The decision to raise the alert was not based on a single event, but on the convergence of these signs, continuous lava extrusion, repeated dome collapse, and the onset of channelized lava flows. The technical language in the FIVO LCS bulletin included phrases such as magmatic eruption ongoing, persistent summit incandescence, and ground inflation, language that carries weight in policy. Under national protocols, alert level three means the risk of hazardous eruption is elevated and calls for strict enforcement of the permanent danger zone, set at six kilometers from the summit. Local officials responded by expanding evacuations and deploying resources to shelters. Around 3,500 people were ordered to leave their homes, not because of what had already happened, but because the monitoring data made clear what was now possible. My own slopes are shaped with remarkable precision, a near-perfect cone rising sharply from the plains of Albay. This symmetry is more than a landmark. It is a physical reason why Mayon's hazards are so difficult to contain. About 40 deep gullies radiate from the summit in every direction, each one acting as a natural chute. When the lava dome at the top collapses, hot debris and ash do not scatter randomly. Instead, they are funneled straight down these channels, accelerating rapidly on the volcano's steep upper flanks. The slope angle here is often close to 30 degrees, which means gravity does most of the work. Pyroclastic flows, dense clouds of ash, rock, and gas pick up speed within seconds, covering the first kilometer or two in less than a minute. Even small dome failures can send these searing avalanches racing through the ravines straight toward the lowlands where people live and farm. This topography is not just a theoretical risk. In 1814, a violent eruption unleashed pyroclastic flows, 
that poured down these same channels, overwhelming towns and burying the Kagsawa church. More than 1,200 people died that day, many unable to escape the sudden onrush. The pattern has repeated itself in smaller ways ever since, flows confined to the same radial gullies, deposits building up layer by layer. Mayon's shape and its network of ravines ensure that every episode of dome growth and collapse is channeled efficiently, turning routine volcanic activity into a direct threat for anyone inside the danger zone. This is why scientists and local officials treat the cone's geometry as a map of risk, not just a feature of the landscape. The permanent danger zone around Mayon stretches six kilometers from the summit in every direction. This boundary is not arbitrary. It is drawn to account for the speed and reach of pyroclastic flows, dense, ground-hugging avalanches of ash, rock, and gas that can accelerate to nearly 100 kilometers per hour as they race down slope. In these conditions, the idea of escape becomes a myth. Even a fit adult running at full speed would cover less than 200 meters in a minute, while a pyroclastic current can travel two kilometers or more in the same span. Municipal officers describe the warning system as unforgiving. They say, once the flow starts, there is no time to react. That is why the order is to leave early, not to wait for the next alarm. Within days of the alert, more than 3,500 residents from Tabaco, Malilipot, Ligao, Kamalig, and Guinobatan were moved to evacuation centers. The logistics are immense. Families boarding trucks, livestock left behind, schools and gyms converted into temporary shelters. According to the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, government relief assistance has already reached about 6.62 million pesos, distributed as food packs, medicines, masks, hygiene kits, and sleeping mats. These resources are deployed not because a catastrophic eruption is underway, but because the physics of Mayon's flows leave no margin for error. The six kilometer zone is the only reliable buffer against a hazard that gives no second chances. Evacuations are about preventing impossible choices at the last minute. Could anyone outrun a pyroclastic surge once it starts? The answer in every official briefing is no. Seismic stations encircle Mayon, collecting a constant stream of data, energy levels, ground movement, and gas output. During the January surge, six of 16 monitoring stations registered a distinct rise in RSAM, which stands for Real-Time Seismic Amplitude Measurement. This uptick was not driven by sudden sharp earthquakes, but by a steady background tremor, a continuous shaking that signals movement of magma and debris near the surface. PHIVOLCS volcanologists interpret this as evidence that the summit vent is open, allowing lava and gases to escape without building excessive pressure. Sulfur dioxide emissions, measured at roughly 777 tons per day, remain close to background levels. The steady output suggests gas is escaping freely, matching what scientists expect from an open vent system. No abrupt spikes in ground deformation have been detected. Tilt meters and GPS show a slow, ongoing inflation on the eastern flanks, but nothing that would indicate a sudden intrusion of magma at depth. Visual monitoring completes the picture. Nighttime cameras capture a persistent glow at the summit, confirming that fresh incandescent lava continues to reach the surface. Rockfall and pyroclastic flow counts are cross-checked against these visual feeds, matching seismic records with what is seen on the slopes. PHIVOLCS experts emphasize that this methodical, multi-parameter approach is what allows them to track Mayan's evolving behavior in real time. Scientists are now weighing three main scenarios for Mayan's next phase. In the first scenario, activity holds steady. The lava dome continues to grow and collapse in small segments, sending frequent but relatively contained pyroclastic flows down established gullies. The summit glow remains visible at night, Sulfur dioxide emissions remain in the hundreds of tons per day, and seismic instruments record ongoing tremor and rockfalls. Under this scenario, the permanent danger zone remains strictly enforced, and evacuations continue for as long as these patterns persist. The threat is not from a single explosion, but from the steady possibility of fast, lethal currents reaching the perimeter of six kilometers at any time. A second scenario involves continued lava extrusion with intermittent bursts of pressure. 
Here, the system produces moderate explosions, short-lived but forceful enough to send ash plumes several kilometers above the summit and to propel larger pyroclastic flows farther down the gullies. These events could push hazardous currents beyond the current exclusion zone, especially if a partial dome collapse coincides with a surge in gas output or renewed ground deformation. In this case, officials may need to expand evacuations or tighten restrictions, especially along the most vulnerable ravines. The third scenario is the least likely, but the most serious. A large-scale collapse of the summit dome or a sudden jump in internal pressure could trigger a much more powerful surge. That would mean bigger, faster pyroclastic flows, potentially overrunning areas outside the permanent danger zone and threatening communities that have already been displaced. Scientists stress there is no sign this outcome is imminent, but it remains a possibility as long as magma supply continues and the dome stays unstable. These scenarios are not predictions. They are possibilities that shape every decision about who stays, who leaves, and how closely the mountain is watched. Today, over 3,500 people wait in evacuation centers as Mayan's activity holds communities in suspense. The volcano's next move remains uncertain, reminding us that even with constant monitoring, nature often decides the timeline. For those displaced, every tremor is a question that has yet to be answered.